Welcome to Buckeyes Tomorrow Morning for Friday, December 30th. I'm your host, Tom Moore. The Peach Bowl game against Georgia is, believe it or not, tomorrow. The game against Michigan in 330 days. That's probably a little easier to believe, Kevin Noon. We are uh, we had a very, very busy Wednesday at the Peach Bowl. Started with media days for the Buckeyes and Georgia. Got to go watch a little Ohio State practice. Got to go to Georgia practice. Didn't get to watch them practice. There's a whole story there. We'll get to, get to that in a minute, but... I guess we got to start with the big news, which was while we were at Ohio State practice, Mayan Williams was also at Ohio State practice, and he was dressed and he was out on the field, and it sure seems like you know no obvious wraps on his ankle or knee or anything. So whatever the injury rumor was is apparently not true. It seems like when they were saying it was a stomach bug, it was in fact probably just a stomach bug, which seems like that's probably very good news for Ohio State. Absolutely, we did not see him at. Media Day. Mm -hmm. So his appearance at practice was maybe a little surprising. Uh, Yes, he was out there going through drills. Uh, I posted some video over at BuckeyeHuddle.com as well as YouTube.com slash Buckeye Huddle. Did have somebody like, well, he looked lethargic. Well, you know, we see the first three periods of practice Mm -hmm. and it is not necessarily a case of them running through brick walls and jumping through flaming hoops. So you know, you're just going through your drills and everything else, and it, it did look good to see him out there. As I've said, Ohio State running the ball against this uh, Georgia defense will be interesting to see how that looks. But as I was kind of putting some stories together, I did find out that uh, Georgia had missed the one, two, and three leading rushers in the SEC due to the way that the schedule works. So something to be said about that. Um, but yes, Mine Williams was there. Mine Williams. Not on a not on a scooter or anything else. That would be Trevion Henderson, mm-hmm. who was there on a scooter. I I expect to see him in some capacity mm-hmm. uh, on on Saturday night. Yeah, Trevion Henderson. Safe to say. I mean, he'd already made it official. He was going to be out. Safe to say he's going to be out. Mayan Williams sure does look like he's going to play. Things are a little more unclear on the Georgia side of things because at practice on Wednesday there were two Georgia starters on offense who had been injured in this SEC championship game against LSU. Both with leg injuries, the wide receiver Lad McConkey, right tackle Warren McClendon. Neither of those guys were at practice during the open period on Wednesday, so everyone was sort of, I think, reasonably wondering: Okay, are they definitely out? What's going on? They were both at media days on Thursday. Both declined to answer questions about their status and deferred all answers to Kirby Smart, who said, "This is not an exact quote, but it was basically, we'll all find out together on Saturday." So um, that is one of those things that is both true and also not particularly helpful. Uh, But on Thursday, when Georgia had their open practice window, both of those guys were out there. Uh, I saw Warren McClendon had a big knee brace, you know, a knee brace on, but he, you know, had his pads and all of that. Uh, Lad McConkey looked like he was sweaty, like he'd been practicing. We were there at the end of practice. So both of those guys, that's still a little bit up in the air. Uh, But boy, Georgia's practice on Thursday. Uh, Kevin didn't go. Uh, I was the only one who from the site who went. Everyone else had other stuff they were doing. Uh, If you remember, we talked about their Wednesday practice and how it was a very intense period, a very intense, very competitive music blaring, crazy atmosphere. Really, really one of the most exciting football practices I've ever been to. And then we went on Thursday and we've got the last 15 minutes of practice on Thursday. And that was the that's time, Kevin. The end of practice is on Thursday. That's the time that Georgia does yoga. So after the intense, loud music, music blaring, uh, you know, screaming, competitive, uh, start to practice on Wednesday, we got the yoga period on Thursday. Kevin, uh, Kirby Smart is just, I mean, just masterful trolling. A A plus, no notes. Well, and I read on, on social media that they normally on their Thursday practice do some sort of yoga and like the person who generally leads it, I guess she has a studio here in the greater Atlanta area, but it it was, it was next level trolling and okay, we have to open up practice to you. We're going to, we're going to give you fire and ice. Mm -hmm. And this would be the ice. This was not apparently not hot yoga. Yeah. And, uh, you know, all right. But, uh, there's the jokes write themselves. The jokes write themselves. yeah, Yeah. It was, uh, 
it was one of those things where you had kind of heard that there, you know, someone had said like, yeah, this is a possibility. It was like, okay, I, I'm, I'm like officially intrigued because this would be really funny if, if we went all the way over to the stadium, waited through security, all that kind of stuff, went inside and, you know, didn't get to actually watch them practice. That would honestly be pretty funny. And it was honestly pretty funny. I will, uh, if I remember, I will throw a quick clip in here of uh, the Georgia Bulldogs uh, doing doing a little bit of yoga during practice, just because really, really, I know it sounds crazy, but yes, it really did happen. Take a full breath in, fill up your belly like a balloon, and then take a full deep exhale. So we take the knees now back into the chest, extend your feet back up to the ceiling, circle the ankles one more time. Well, at Ohio State's practice, it was a little bit of a different twist where, okay, they, you know, a lot of times you go to practice and it's, uh, you know, on Wednesday we watched a lot of kickoff and punt stuff and, you know, special teams and kick field goals and that kind of stuff. Thursday, they sent us down. We got to go down to one of the end zones. Normally you only get to watch on the sideline. You get to walk up in the end zones. They run out there for 11 on 11 and it was like, wow, this is crazy. I can't believe we get to watch this. And it was the threes. So... We got to watch uh, Devin Brown. We got to watch Keon Grays catch a really impressive long touchdown pass. I don't think we learned any more or less uh, about the 2022 Buckeyes uh, with the Peach Bowl, but, you know, it was kind of interesting to see the young guys out there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you get this opportunity. We talk so much about the here and now and the immediacy of the bowl game. I mean, it's only amplified when you're dealing with a college football playoff game. And where, as opposed to maybe the quote unquote meaningless exhibition game, but a lot of this is an opportunity to get your younger guys some opportunities to go and uh, work things through. And seeing uh, Devin Brown and Keon Gray's connect on a long touchdown, I mean, it certainly good looked good. Is that something we could see next year? Maybe you know, time will tell on there. But while Kirby's trolling was on point. <laughs> Ohio State you know, op- shot the opening salvo there, and it was pretty ironic that they, they allowed us 11-on-11, 11 11, but it was the threes. Yes, yes. And, and so this is just kind of like, this is sort of what this stuff has sort of turned into in some ways now, especially for a game like this. You know, if they were in the Citrus Bowl, it's a lot lower stakes, and maybe, you know, maybe we have, we have seen at Rose Bowls in the past, at, you know, actual practice stuff, actual, you know, tackling drills, whatever. This was, uh, you know, this is a little higher stakes. They're a little more, you know, a little more concerned about uh, anyone finding out anything about anything. We got to talk to uh, any Ohio State player or coach that we wanted to for 45 minutes. Except the few that weren't there. Well, except for the few that weren't there. But <laughs> other than those, we got to talk to, and this is, this is a, you know, this is one of those things where the bowl media day is your first opportunity to talk to a huge number of, the, you know, a huge chunk of the team, you know, for the true freshmen, it's the first time since they enrolled generally, you know, some of these guys we haven't talked to since January or February. Um, and then, you know, a lot of the times it's other guys who you just don't get to talk to that much. So you get to talk to kind of whoever you want to. We put a ton of video up uh, on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Buckeye Huddle. If you want to watch, you know, and that, that's a lot of uh, fo- video focused on the fia- the Peach Bowl instead of the future. So you got a lot of Ryan Day and Kevin Wilson and Jim Knowles and C.J. Stroud and Marvin Harrison and Zach Harrison and on and on and on. So it's guys like that. But, um, you know, I got to talk to Tony Alford a little bit about Dallin Hayden and, you know, what's, you know, how is he? First of all, Ryan Day said he expected Dallin Hayden to get more action than he did in the Michigan game, which... I mean, one is more than zero. So. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, that's the, it. Would hard, be hard to not have more, but yes. Um, and then uh, talk to Tony Alfred just a little bit about you know younger guys, and you know they don't generally talk about a specific guy and say here's what he's not doing. It, it's you know more general. But what he was saying with was a lot of times with younger guys, it's the pass pro. That's the thing that keeps them off the field. Is sometimes you just got to get a little bigger. Sometimes you got to get. Just better technique, better recognition in terms of what's going on, whatever it is. But it's the pass pro. That's the thing that it, that keeps you from being on the field more. Because, yeah, I think in the case of Dallin Hayden, we've seen that he can run the ball. He had, what, 27 carries for 140 yards and three touchdowns against Maryland. You've seen he can do it. 
But if you're trying to pick up a blitzing Georgia linebacker, well, you'd better be real sure that you have uh, a guy in there you can trust. So that that might be the limiting factor there on Dallin Hayden. But uh, I did think that was kind of interesting. Uh, you got to talk to a whole. You we basically did the divide and conquer thing. Tony talked to one group of players. Kevin talked to another. I talked to a different group of players. What what did you hear? What what was something interesting that you learned uh, during media days? Well, first I learned don't break in a new camera on a high leverage event like this. Mm-hmm. I had multiple cameras and lost a couple of things that I would like to get. Um, <laughs> a lot of players, you know, I I went with a lot of the. How has the last month been for you? Uh, you're in. You're out, you're in, but nobody cares. God, I hope we don't get embarrassed, et cetera. How do you, how are you taking that? And a lot of people are like, well, you know, we just, we, we don't listen to the noise. We want to make everybody, you know, proud of us when we win these next two games. I mean, but it wasn't bulletin board material esque. I mean, it was just looking forward and, and, you know, we're confident that we can win this game. We're confident that we have a good plan. We have the right athletes, everything else. Uh, I had a chance to talk to the players about their go-karting experience last night. Mm-hmm. I found out that uh, Pali uh, Naoteote is a fantastic go-kart driver. He was the fastest. Mm-hmm. And I was told that if you ever see Enoch Mahi on a go-kart track, that watch out because he's terrible. <laughs> so, uh, and, th- and then I had the opportunity really to have my first true conversation with Jim Knowles, and that was one of the videos that the camera monster ate. Mm. So that was disappointing, but I asked him about not the Georgia offense, but the Georgia defense. And I said, as a longtime defensive coordinator, you, I'm sure you study what other, uh, other coordinators are doing. Obviously, Kirby's defense has its roots in what Nick Saban does. And likes, and he was, you know, he had a lot of great things to say there. And you're going to be like, well, Kevin, I'd really like to see it. I'm going to have to jog my memory <laughs> to remember it. But uh, had a very enjoyable conversation with Jim Knowles, who understands. He talked about, he, he knows that people have been very critical with because of those five explosive plays. It's like, that's just kind of par for the course. I mean, in terms of that the criticism is strong, it's like we get compensated very well and we have to do better and we're going to do better. And that was one of the big things there. In terms of talking to Jim Knowles, I mean, you know that, you know, everybody is sick and tired of talking about the Michigan game, but it happened. It's real. It's there. Uh, Now is the opportunity to show that that was the anomaly and not becoming the norm. And, you know, the Michigan game gets talked about because it was the most recent game. Well, it will, you know, 48 hours from now, it will not be the most recent game. And the Georgia game will get talked about. And uh, that's going to go one of two ways. And we will all find out together how that goes on Saturday night. But before that happens on Saturday night, we do have our last full day of content before the Peach Bowl coming up on Friday for you. We have uh, the head coaches press conference. We'll talk to Kirby Smart and Ryan Day for about 45 minutes on Friday morning. We'll have that streaming live at youtube.com slash Buckeye Huddle. We're also planning to do an, kind of an extended live show at some point on Friday on our YouTube channel, just answering your questions, talking about the whole week, everything we've learned, everything we've seen and heard. It has been a really fun, eventful week. We've been really busy. Uh, it's this flown week. by. It has definitely flown by. We, I was looking at the, setting up the uh, sh- this show, and I thought, wait, the Peach Bowl against Georgia is tomorrow? That can't be right. But yes, in fact, it is right. Boy, it's almost there. It does. These weeks do kind of do kind of zip by. So uh, that will uh, do it for today. We will obviously have a lot more coverage for you on Friday at uh, buckeyehuddle dot com and youtube dot com slash buckeyehuddle. Make sure you are a member and subscribe both of those places. Lots of content, unique content, both places, uh, and uh, great, great stuff on our uh, insiders board on the uh, on the huddle board at buckeyehuddle.com as well. Sign up today and uh, be a part of all the uh, all of the uh, very eventful stuff going on this week in Buckeye Athletics. You so, think we might have a live show coming up too? Uh, yes, I'm gonna I'm gonna guess we're gonna have a live show coming up. Uh, yes, yeah, um, so I probably should check that out. Huh? Yeah, yeah, that's probably probably good. Probably a good thing, yes. So uh, that will do it for today. Thank you guys all for joining us. Have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.